Hello. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Welcome to the Bears Den. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it and I love the masks. Thanks, thanks. I know, yeah. We have to, COVID safe. I mean, we spend every day together pretty much, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they're great. They're well cool. And I love all the array of trainers in the background. You're doing well. I love it. I know. Just keeping it interesting for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. We've been so excited about this, um, haven't we? Yeah. All morning, um, we're like, how long to go? How long to yeah. go? <laughs> so yeah, we're super excited. So uh, oh, pleasure. obviously quite a few people are joining now. I'll let them all just join. And um, yeah, we just wanted to start off by introducing you, shining a little bit of a spotlight on uh, just a few of your many achievements. So we'll just stroke your ego for a minute, you'll get all embarrassed and then we'll move on to the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Brilliant. So we just thought, uh, we start with, like I said, some of your achievements. So you've won an incredible 13 medals throughout your career. So from gold at the World Indoor Championships, of which you still hold the record for 400 metres, right. uh, to the Olympics, where obviously you won silver as part of the 4x4 relay team. So you must have some absolutely amazing memories from spending 10 years at the top of the sport. So uh, let's, yeah. I think, start with... Start with the Olympics. Yeah, the Why one not? everyone is like, oh my God, oh my God, you've got to ask him all about that. So uh, <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, Olympics. How did that feel? It, it was your first year competing, wasn't it, that year as well? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, my first ever Olympic Games. I was, what, 23 years old. Um, we had an amazing uh, team, you know, 4x4 four four team, myself, Roger Black, Mark Richardson and Ewan Thomas. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, so we were pretty confident going into that Olympics just because we had like a, a, a killer team. Do you know what I mean? I mean, everyone yeah. talks about the era of sort of like the Chris Hakabusis and John Regis's when they beat uh, the Americans, which was an amazing race in 1991. But that being said, you know, we had a sort of like a, a sharper, faster team and to go to Atlanta in America and uh, sort of come away with a, a silver medal. And we came away with a silver medal when, if you remember rightly, it was a long time ago now, but not many mm -hmm. sportsmen or women at the Atlanta Games from the UK really won many medals. And it was only then they yeah. started into the sport. So, um, yeah, I felt like a bit of a hero, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, that. And you were, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it, obviously it got even better however many years later when it kind of changed to a goal didn't it so uh that, that, that's right you know it's it's funny how sport is you know how um you you find yourself sort of you know as a child you know running around just like everyone else and then you suddenly go on oh, a little bit faster than that person <laughs> faster than that i beat you 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 <laughs> Well, I tell you what, you know, you're laughing, right? This is a true story, right? I, um, I remember coming home from the World Championships in 99, which I won. And I remember walking around Asda, right, when I got home. And I was walking around, pushing my trolley. And I remember going, I'm faster than that person. I'm faster than that person. I'm faster than that person. I was like, oh, my God, I'm faster than everyone in Asda. Right? <laughs> and it was like, that, I love it. It dawned on me that I was the fastest man in the world at that point and um, <laughs> that's a weird feeling you know knowing that you know in that space in time that you know I was the quickest guy so uh, yeah kind of weird kind of weird how it all works yeah I bet so it was when you were younger so how old was you then when you realized how good you yeah how the potential that you get into the Olympics and stuff well, I, I was 11 years old when I started doing track and field. Um, my granddad and my mum took me down to my first ever session. And it was after um, I had won sports day, right? Um, so uh -huh. I'll tell you a little story about my sports day in school. And this is where I got found as an athlete. So my headmaster, Mr. Atkins, um, he, he was sort of um, doing the starting, you know, saying on your marks, don't go. Anyway, we had this event called the obstacle race, right? Where you had to run 10 metres with an egg and spoon. Then you'd have yeah. to put the egg and spoon down, go over one of those wooden bench. Tools, yeah. Then go over the wooden bench. Um, uh, then get into this sack, like I jump in the sack. <laughs> go underneath this crash mat and sprint to the finish. Anyway, my headmaster said, on your marks, get set, go. So I started running with the egg and spoon, put the egg and spoon down over the wooden bench, into the sack. Underneath the crash mat, and because I couldn't see where I was going, I ended up coming out of the side. And my <laughs> was Jamie, you've cheated, go back to the start. So I went all the way back to the start, picked no. up the spoon over the wooden bench, into the sack, underneath the crash mat, sprinted to the finish, 
and I ended up winning the race. I went twice as fast as every kid in the whole school. And um, my master was saying, hey, Mr. Bowles, you're oh a great. <laughs> that was it. That's how I got into it. <laughs> my headmaster was a runner and he said, I think you should take it up. So uh, the rest is history, so they said. Yeah. So good time. How old were you when you, when did you join a running club then? So that was it when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, Newport Harriers down in South Wales, uh, an amazing club. You know, I was with them yeah. for, for a long time. I ended up um, moving to Cardiff, um, as in uh, Cardiff after AC, purely because I wanted mm -hmm. more competition sort of thing. But, um, yeah. you know, a very good running club. I mean, your, your, your shop would, um, would do very well with Newport because it was a lot of distance runners in the Newport. Nice. Uh -huh. Yeah, very, very good club. We had a, a guy called Neil Horsfield, who is an amazing sort of um, 1500 meter, you know, 5000 meter runner. You know, he was, he was a great guy. And I just remember seeing this big guy, Neil Horsfield. I was like, oh my God, the Horsfield. <laughs> you always remember the legend who's from your running club. Yeah, of course. He was my sort of, I suppose, inspiration who who I met very early on yeah. in my career and I thought, well, I wouldn't mind doing what he's doing. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's funny how you look at it, you know? I know. And now you're the legend of the running club as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. That is <laughs> kind now of... Now everyone says, I wish I was like him. <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? Because um, I, I put in my Insta stories today that it's 24 years ago today that I broke the British 400 metre record, which yeah. I alone to this day nobody has run faster in the uk um since that time uh, yeah and, and i'm like going really you know as i said in my insta i said like i'm like lord farquhar from shrek right <laughs> I'm, I'm the shortest athlete i'm five foot eight i'm from wales i think other people from wales can't make it because look at colin jackson right and you were talking uh -huh. people but what i'm saying is like how <laughs> you know you just think in a quarter of a century that somebody would have ran a bit quicker maybe they need to go to yeah. your shop and buy some decent shoes i don't know maybe that's it i mean we want you to keep hold of it though we don't you we don't we want you to keep hold of it so but i mean yeah they can all come <laughs> you know what it's a weird thing right because people ask me that they say do you want to keep the record? Uh -huh. Well, you know, yeah, to a degree, it's quite nice to say you're British record holder still. But at the same time, I would love somebody to run faster than it. You know, maybe if you interview yeah. in a couple of years' time, if somebody breaks, I might be like, damn, I wish I still had it. But, yeah. But right now... Like, right, I, I'm returning. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, good. Well, who knows? We'll see, I guess, over the next few years. Yeah. We'll see. There's a lot of up-and-coming talent for sure, isn't there? So, oh, my... Uh, yeah, we've got some great talent in the UK. We've got it's, it's, the ones which are flying at the moment in track and field, really, are the female sprinters. Mm -hmm. they're, they're phenomenal. Obviously, we've got yeah. the likes of Adam Jamili, who's an amazing athlete, and we've got some amazing athletes there at the moment. But you know, the one thing which I feel has changed a lot is I don't think they get the airtime, which like I would have had. Yeah. When I was competing, it was Colin Jackson, Linford Christie, Kelly Holmes, yeah. Steve Backley. You know, Roger, but you name them. It was a foot full of all these household names, and yeah. I don't think they really get the same sort of um, kudos as which they yeah. deserve, really. Which is a bit of a shame right now, you know. Yeah. yeah. Sure. They know them to talk about, and it's. Oh. Yeah. So everyone. All generations know those names for sure, so um, there is definitely a bit of truth to that. Yeah, no, a hundred. I I just think you know the thing is what's changed a lot now is you know there's a lot more um, a lot more channels on TV. There's a lot more things to do. People for some reason yeah. love Love Island over watching track and field. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't think of why on that one. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's you know it's good, it's good it's good for them obviously, which is fantastic. But I just think it's a bit of a shame that we don't um, glorify our heroes as much as we did. You know? Yeah, for sure. So, in terms of the Olympics, then I've heard a little bit of a story about you and Thomas, and um, I particularly look at your face now. <laughs> And a particular flower lady, maybe. So, can you just tell us that story? Oh my <laughs> God! Like you're going there, you're going live on live. 
Um, you know, oh, I'll tell us, won't tell anyone, don't worry. Yeah, no, we won't tell anyone. no, it was a funny story that, uh, I can't believe, how do you know this story? <laughs> oh, I made it my mission to know these things, don't worry. <laughs> I'm thinking, do I actually say this live on, on Insta? But basically, just I'm going to say it very briefly, because, you know, you were just, but... Uh, basically, when we were on the Olympic rostrum, it was funny because when you go to the Olympics, you always get like a beautiful lady who gives you the flowers as well to get your medal. Uh -huh. And I just remember at the time, you know, tw 20 odd years ago, so it was a long time, we were young kids. And of course, yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just remember you and sort of like chatting up the flower lady, which is kind of funny. And uh, yeah, I'll say the more on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanna, yeah, there's a YouTube video out there where you do uh, go into a little bit more detail, just if people want to, uh, yeah, <laughs> if people want to find that out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. Everyone um, has asked basically, how did you feel about competing against athletes who had served drug ba uh, drug bans? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm very outspoken when it comes to people who take drugs in the mm -hmm. sport. Um, I, you know, I think it's disgusting, you know. To me, you know, the, the bottom line of it, you know, the people I blame um, really on the drug-taking element of it is, yes, the athlete, first and foremost, is horrific. What are they thinking about? But the main thing yeah. which I think is really bad is the sponsors. So if the sponsors didn't give... You know, so let's just use Nike, Adidas, Reebok, whatever, right? Whoever they are. Let's just use Nike as an example. Um, I think they sponsored Justin Gatlin. Let's give that as a prime example. Fan twice, uh, where he gets paid all his money, or a lot of his money, are from endorsements yeah. from the sponsors. So I think it should be written into an contract that if you get caught on drugs, that all your sponsorship money goes back to the firm which paid you it. And I, yeah. if they did that, it would stop people from cheating because these people mm -hmm. cheat and the sponsor still pays them. And yeah, there's no risk question to it. And, yeah. you know, not that I would ever do it and I never did do it and I would never condone taking drugs. But, you know, it's, it's, for some of these athletes, it's a matter of having a really good life or having a not great life, you know. So they're willing yeah. to take risk because... You know, if you if you chat to uh, Justin Gatlin now, somebody like that, he's a multi-millionaire, you know, and he's got the swimming pool and maybe the Ferrari parked out. Yeah. And you think, well, OK, I, I understand it. I don't condone it, but I understand yeah. it. So I think that's the thing they need to they need to change, you know? Yeah. Yeah, make that a little bit more reason uh, of why they should be afraid of it, of their yeah. decisions. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know, at the end of the day, it's no fear to to, to mm -hmm. stop them from doing it. They think, well, if I get caught, yeah. I'm still going to possibly get sponsored, <laughs> or you know, yeah. and, and they're willing to take that risk. But if they knew that they uh, they the clothing company were going to rip all their endorsements away, then I think there would be a le a lot less drugs in sport. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So we had another question um, saying, how did you cope with pressure of running at such a competitive level where there were times when, oh, and where the times when you struggled as well? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, when you, when you reach the level I got to, you know, Olympic final, world final, world championship gold medal status, it's difficult, it's hard. But for me, I, I in my training group, I was very fortunate mm -hmm. to train with, Colin Jackson was my coach. Linda Christie was my coach at some point. We had Darren yeah. Merlin Otti, Frankie Fredericks, Mark McCoy. You know, all these athletes I'm mentioning, yeah. all Olympic silver stroke gold medalists. So, you know, we're, if I look to my left or right in training, I'd be competing with the best in the world. So for me to suddenly yeah. step on the track and compete with people in my event, which was obviously the 400 metres, it wasn't so daunting because I used to madness every day of my life anyway so i yeah. i enjoyed it you know i felt very privileged to, to to have been at that level and and competed at that so um uh -huh. yeah, for me it was a great thing and i feel feel very lucky for it do you think that you thrive off pressure because i think you either do or you don't don't you sir? yeah I, I i don't get me wrong i was scared but they say fear and excitement is the same, pretty much the same uh -huh. drug in your body. It's the same thing, you know. Yeah. It's just a matter of if you're just scared to just tip that yeah. up to excitement. And that's why if you watch me in lots of my races, like, 
I, I was a bit of a clown when I used to run because I used to just go for it. Um, I, uh -huh. I didn't have no fear. And, uh, uh -huh. you know, the 400 meters is a very difficult event. And I would be like kick with 300 meters to go, which was insane. You know, you wouldn't do something like that. Yeah. Little Jamie Bolts from Wales just like, <laughs> you know, it was good fun. Um, so obviously I bet there were some really good celebration parties after the events like the Olympics. Did you all kind of celebrate and party as hard as you trained or? Um, again, uh, this is before the, the watershed. So yeah, we, you know, we, we, <laughs> we had some good times, you know, the Olympics, yeah. you know, the people who've never been to the Olympics have these rumors of what goes on at the Olympics. Yeah, it's kind of crazy out there, right? Uh, <laughs> You're all, you're all young athletes, all trained hard, and then you all party hard. I think that, that the craziest sport, I must say, and I'll say it live on here, that are the swimmers. The swimmers. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and, the, and I've got a theory for this, so if any swimmers are listening to this and not runners, um, at the Olympics, they're in, they compete in the first week of the Olympics, so their events are over, so they party. And can you imagine being a swimmer, training every day with your head in the water like that, right? So it, yeah. it's, it can't be the most social sport in the world, right? So, so the swimmers, I mean, it's a, it's, they're, they're nuts. So um, <laughs> party hard, you know? Um, yeah, so they is. make the most. Yeah, they definitely make the most of it. And you can hear them the loudest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds fun. Yeah. Um, Okay, there you go. This is one of your questions, actually, wasn't it? So, oh yeah. So, when you started, um, when you started running with Newport, when you became an elite athlete, did you move for training? So, did you go? Did you move um, away from where you were, was when you yeah. were younger to train? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I ended up. Um, so, I was very lucky in 1994 at the Commonwealth Games in Victoria in. Um, in Canada, um, I would have been 21 years old, um, and Colin Jackson had won the world championships the year before and broke the world yeah. record. And I was in his room with uh, another athlete called Paul Gray, and Colin Jackson said to me, would you like me to be your coach? I was like, what? Nah, I'm okay. <laughs> nah, you're rubbish, mate. Like, do me. <laughs> and in at the Commonwealth and he was at his peak and I was like immediately like are you serious he said yeah I've got a house in Florida if you want to come oh, wow. and me in Florida I'll look after your expenses and all the, all the stuff to get you on your feet wow. and the rest was history I mean I was training with him for a year um the following year I came out and ran the 400 meters my first proper 400 meters and beat Roger Black in my first ever race to then yeah. um, a, a year later win an Olympic silver medal. So within a two year time frame of training with Colin and Darren and Linford and Frankie and all these sort of amazing athletes, Bruni Surin, you know, these amazing athletes every day, um, yeah. I got my medal. So yeah, I mean, as a sportsman, um, you, you've got to go away. I mean, you know, look how, yeah. cold, look how cold it is outside right now. <laughs> You know I mean? If you're going to try and compete with the Jamaicans and the Americans, which have got an, an advantage to, of the weather, I mean, yeah. you've got to get yourself in that environment. And, and that's what I did. I trained with, with the, the best athletes in the world. They say success breeds success. And if you train with successful people, it rubs off. And um, yeah, I had, a, I had a fantastic time. Very, very, very lucky. And did you do much crash training at the time? Or was it just solely running, um, running, running? We did a little bit of boxing training, which may sound a bit crazy. We did some boxing training. When I, when I was living in America, uh, we trained at Michael Moore's gym. Michael Moore was an, a, a former world heavyweight boxing champion. We tra trained at his gym. And we had the world flyweight champion who would sort of coach us, and we'd go in the ring. Wow. But it was a bit crazy when I looked. Yeah. It was a bit crazy. But, you know all respect to the boxers out there their training is horrific i mean the 400 meters training is just a joke but you know that cross training of doing boxing training skipping on the pads was was really yeah. good and you know when colin was coaching me he was coaching me for the 100 and 200 meters he wasn't mm -hmm. coaching me for the 400 meters and it was only because i got so fit i just ran a 400 for a bit of a laugh and i ended up winning it <laughs> just for fun yeah, yeah. it was it was why fun. not <laughs> And, and in my first pop of race, I broke the Welsh record. I was the second fastest athlete in Britain. And I was like, Crazy. oh, right. Yeah, it was, it was just <laughs> great. Perhaps. 
<laughs> so when you were growing up then who was your running idol well I, it's got a it's two two athletes really one colin jackson because uh -huh. uh, he used to train at cumbrand stadium uh, and i used to train there uh, he was with nigel walker an amazing athlete uh former athlete and linford would come down now and then so i remember seeing oh colin god. Week, oh my god it's colin jackson i was so yeah he's <laughs> half of me saying he always says it like my running blocks used to be bigger than me. That's how small I was. As a <laughs> so I remember him when I was 11 years old when I first started. So he was my sort of local legendary idol then. And then um, the one person which I really loved um, in 1984, so a long time ago now, uh, was Daley Thompson. Um, he yeah. was a decathlete, amazing athlete. He won the Olympics in 1984, sorry. And I remember... Um, so I'm adopted, right? And I, I, um, mm -hmm. I, I've grown up with two white parents, amazing people, Marilyn and Alan, absolutely love these guys. But when in 19, I was seeing Dave Thompson at the Olympics, and I remember going, I wonder if he's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had the, <laughs> sort of the only difference, he had a moustache, he's like 25 years older than me, like, you know? <laughs> it was funny, I did a, um, I did a dinner with, with him, um, and I was on stage with uh, Daly about two years ago. We're both on stage, and I said this story. I said when I was when I was younger, you know, I generally thought you might be my dad. And he was very quick witted, and he turned to me like this, and he goes, "What makes you think I'm not?" <laughs> that's it, that's I love it. it. Oh. I love it. That's awesome. So just ask that question, Well, So someone oh, yeah. saying, "Paul, was he your inspiration to win to win medals?" Yeah, he was, you know, um, Daly was, you know, when you get to see this guy absolutely annihilate, you know, Edwin, yeah. um, uh, when, he, when he beat the German, you know, it was at this rivalry which he had with, Jürgen, with this German athlete, I would just remember going, wow, and if you remember, it's a classic shot of you guys Google it afterwards where mm -hmm. Daly Thompson has won the Olympics, he's just won the, uh, the, the final event, he stood up like this. And just see yeah. everyone on the floor surrounding him, all sort of on their backs like this. And, and it's iconic, you know. Um, I just got this memory. And it's just so mad that, you know, I'm friends with Daly now. Yeah. It's that I, I still, to this day, when I see Colin and Daly and Steve Cram and some of the older athletes, I, I just go... Mm -hmm. They, they're my mates so. yeah i know these guys well yeah <laughs> like, you know? young jamie must have to pinch himself yeah. quite a lot <laughs> i generally do it's it's it's, it's kind of weird you know and it, it's funny when you you know you become sort of like i suppose a little celebrity in your own right i mean i remember uh -huh, being, sure. um i remember being in 10 downing street x amount of years ago was it the olympic year 96 and I was, in, yeah. I was, in, I was it was uh, John Major was here, and I was in, I was in uh, Ten Downing Street, and I had Paul Gascoigne, the footballer, the legend. Yeah. He goes, All right, mate. Oh my God, I'm a massive fan of yours. I was like, really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruno did yeah. the same thing, and I think one of my my highlights um, was I was at the British Sports Personality in 1999, and I I was in the like the VIP. No, I was actually in the studio actually. I was in the studio, I could hear somebody going, Jamie, Jamie, calling my name. I was like, who's that calling me? Turn round and it was Ryan Giggs, right? Oh my God. <laughs> so I walked up with Ryan, never met him before in my life. Yeah. And he said, how are you, Jamie? Nice to meet you. And he shook my hand. I said, hey, Ryan, how are you? And I was like, oh my God, it's Ryan Giggs. Like, <laughs> then, inside. <laughs> yeah, next to him was David Beckham. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I, but I, I actually, it, they wouldn't have known it, but I actually cool. And I turned to David and he went, oh, I turned and I was like, all right, mate. Like, it was just a yeah. weird, really weird, surreal moment meeting these sort of people who sort of knew yeah. who were, you know. It's uh, very, very odd. You don't realise how many people you inspire by just doing yeah. what you do, you know. For sure. Yeah. And I bet you obviously um, do quite a lot with, like, school children and young athletes as well. And... I bet it just must be so surreal when you go meet them and they're like, also, like, oh my God, it's, you know, don't yeah. get so excited well, to talk to you. Well, it's, well it's, I, I find it really mad. If you manage to get, say, somebody like a Mo Farrer on you, right? Uh -huh. um, I, I, <laughs> Mo actually won in 2012. And, you know, I've known Mo since, you know, for a long time. And, yeah. and I met him at the Celtic Manor just down the road from me. And um, we were chatting just after the Olympics. So Sir Mo, proper legend in 2012. Yeah. 
and we're, we're chatting away, this and that. He goes, Jamie. I went, yeah, yeah. And we're just chatting, me and him at the hotel. He said, do you remember when I used to have dreadlocks? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. <laughs> and he goes, you know why I got the dreadlocks, right? I said, no. He said, you know it's because of you, right? I went, <laughs> what? Like, and I'm just thinking, this guy just won the Olympics, proper leg, super Saturday, yeah. and talking about me inspiring him. And I'm like going, yeah. it's oh. weird now. The, the roles are reversed and uh it's, it's, it's a funny old game, you know, that you meet people. And, I, you know, when I chat to, what you find is it's usually crossover of different sports which mm -hmm. have got that sort of, like, if you meet musicians, they're like, oh, my God. And if and the musician is looking at you as a sportsman going, oh, I watched you last night on TV. And you're looking at them going, no, you're the musician. It's a really odd sort of uh, thing, but it's, it's, it's great. It's absolutely great. Yeah. For sure. Oh. There's a question that I just want to ask. So someone's put, um, Bill has put, Team GB, of, so I think this is meant to be a scenario. So Team GB have reached the Olympic 4x4 um, meets final. Jamie is in the team and which three other athletes that he's competed with would be in the team and which legs would they run? So there you go. Oh, that's... that's... So I do it all over again. Who'd you pick? <laughs> that's under pressure. Well, I'd, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to pick the team I competed with. I mean... Uh -huh. uh... I think that's fair. Yeah, it, would, it, it it generally and it generally wouldn't be any other team. I mean, there's been some great athletes which have come before and since. You know, uh, the likes of say Derek Redmond and Chris Akerbusin, John Regis, what a legend he was. But but I mean, yeah, Roger, Ewan, and Mark. I think we were pretty much inseparable, really. Uh, yeah. We still got the British, European, and Commonwealth record. What twenty yeah. twenty five years later, you know, so. You know, I'm I'm quite honoured about that. And you must have really bonded as well, Joy. You you know, you yeah. so hard together. Yeah, we did. You know, we we really did. You know, like when we when we um, funny enough, the Olympics in '96, we ended up having um, chicken nuggets with our last meal before the final. McDonald's. <laughs> I, I had the McDonald's on you. We're pillars of health, right? Um, of course, yeah. And, and I'm 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 pescatarian now, so I would never eat anything. Uh -huh. But but um. It's uh, it's funny that we we were definitely a team, and we we made sure that when we went on the track, we were all wearing the same uniform. So maybe the the running tights and the t shirt was the same. So we made sure we yeah. looked the team, and we you know we held our heads high. You know there, there was a there was a definite um, what would I put? Not it wasn't arrogance, but confidence within the yeah, team. True. You know, and you've got to have that. You know, hundred percent. You've got to have that to be successful. You've got to have that air of confidence, and uh, yeah, we definitely had it that day. Yeah, and I think you've got to trust. You've got to trust and back yourself, haven't you? And I think as soon as you do that, other people naturally are like and inspired and almost a bit like scared about that. They're like those guys believe they're going to win, so they might win. There's yeah. that whole kind of yeah, that's thought. you know, it, it's like you've got to have that winning mentality. I mean, when I won the world championships in 1999 in the world indoor champs. I knew I was going to win it before I even won it. Like, I knew, yeah. like, you might go, really? How did you know that? Well, I was so confident. I mean, like I say, I, I joke around when I say I'm five for eight. I am actually five for eight, right? Yeah. My competitors were usually six foot, six one, six two. So I was very short in comparison. And I remember in at the World Championships, I remember... Um, do it in my warm up, and you do this thing called running drills, which you all know, right? So you do. I'm doing. Yeah. A, um, I remember the American being about twenty meters away from me, but in my lane, coming towards me, doing high knees. So I carried on doing high knees towards him, and we got closer and closer and closer. And as we got really close, and he's loads bigger than me, he ended yeah. up out of my way. And and the reason he did that is because he had more respect for me sort of thing than I did of him. Like my, my, my demeanor was like so larger than life. He was, he was fearful of me, you know? Yeah. So when he got out my lane, I went, oh my God, I've beaten him, right? So then <laughs> I went into the Jamaican guy's lane and I got in his lane and I started doing the same thing. And he got out of my way and everyone, I, I went to everyone's lane in the warm up track and everyone got out my way and I went, well, I've won. Because if they had, thought that they had a chance they would have you'd have collided but they yeah yeah they didn't sure want to collide with me because oh we can't collide with this guy because he's really good you know and like yeah i'm the shortest guy out there so 
by the time I stepped on the track, I went, well, it's a formality now. Um, I ended up winning, you know. So, um, yeah, great moments in sport. I love that. I love that mentality as well. I really do. So, um, a question from Kat. Do you think developments within areas like trainers, tech, nutrition and training, etc., would have made a difference to you back then? Yeah, I, I, I do think that, you know, it, it, it could have added a, a, a little bit of yardage, you know, that the tech mm -hmm. and what they've got now um, is amazing. Um, I used to love, like, I'm, I'm still with them now, Puma and my brand, I love Puma. Uh, they still sponsor me to this day, which is amazing. And yeah. They had these trainers called, oh, Spikes, running Spikes called LA Stars. And they're like amazing. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I honestly, they were ultra light. Even now, I reckon they're up there with the latest shoe. You know what I mean? They, 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 uh -huh. they, they were so, so good. I, I, what I do feel though, and the reason, and I say this quite regularly when this sort of thing comes up about technology and whatnot, mm -hmm. is the reason why I still hold the British record, what, 24 years later, is we all know that the tech's got a lot better. We all know the track's got a lot faster. The timing's maybe a little bit, you know, the whole thing, the nutrition, et cetera, et cetera. But why has my record been broken is I believe that people are, they're, they're relying on the technology to, so much and the video analysis, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. to a degree. At that level, I'm talking now. Yeah. yeah. The, the bottom line is, is this and I'm sounding like an old man now but this is the <laughs> deal is there's no substitute for hard work you, yeah you know, sure. especially in the 400 meters you've got to train your butt off you can't just yeah can't go, let's just do some video analysis see his gait to see if he's running well and all that it means nothing if you haven't put the heart and lungs in then you're going to come last you know so yeah especially the 400 meters you, you you've got to get mm. you've got to put the graft in and I feel that people have got yeah for sure so that brings on to carbon then yeah. for or against it it brings it on to what sorry Car sorry like carbon. Carbon, carbon plated shoes and spikes yeah yeah I, I i think you know like i said the enhancement yes great mm -hmm. uh, but you just don't rely on it yeah your spikes will only be good as good as your heart and lungs yeah <laughs> that's bottom line yeah and, and, you know, you've got to put the hard mileage. If you do, if you combine the both, oh, unstoppable. Yeah. So, about 10 years ago, you raced against the race. Have you got time, by the way? I know we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're okay for time. Perfect. So, yeah, you raced against the racehorse. How on earth did that come around? Oh, my gosh. Well, I did that for a, a charity. I'm, I'm, I'm an ambassador of Bernardo's, uh, the children's charity, which I'm, I'm proudly part of. And yeah. I, um, Jesse Owens, the amazing athlete from the 1930s, you know, he, mm -hmm. he used to run against horses for money back, way back when. And some bright spark had it that, oh, let's try and do a modern day version of it. And I hired <laughs> five years, right? And yeah. Who had all the pies? Who was drinking the Guinness? I, it was me. You know, I was not, I wouldn't. I would, <laughs> the world right and um, I wasn't majorly out of shape but I went in brilliant, brilliant shape and I hadn't ran for years and so I got asked um if I would do it and they, everyone knows I like to have a bit of a laugh and we'll take on it yeah so um like everyone always says to me when are you going to go on Strictly Come Dancing when are you going to be <laughs> that oh, I've got that sort of thing right and um anyway I um yeah, I, I, I got asked to do it. And I think two weeks later, I was running against this horse called Peopleton Brook. Um, yeah. I generally thought um, uh, uh, that it was only going to be about 10 people watching. It was, yeah. it was like thousands of people. <laughs> no pressure then whatsoever. I, I actually, I was as nervous then. as I, In fact, I was more nervous then than I was at the Olympics because I knew I weren't in shape. Yeah. I knew I hadn't done <laughs> I knew that... I ate all the pies, you know what I mean? I was, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so. Well, you still did very, very well anyway, didn't you? You were uh, yeah. incredibly close. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was a good, it was a good race. The horse obviously won. Um, it's got four legs. <laughs> I've already got two. <laughs> <It's pretty obvious. laughs> it sounds so funny to say, doesn't it? The horse won, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah the horse won, yeah. It won by a <laughs> yeah. Um, it was it was great, actually. I really enjoyed it. I was... I, 
I tell you what, my hamstrings were sore the next day, you know. Whew, I could have done with those carbon plates and everything. <laughs> you might, you never know, do you? <laughs> no, no. Perfect. So how do you maintain your fitness now that you're retired from running? I know a lot yeah. of people have asked well, that question. Yeah, well, I'm, I managed to, um, you know, with COVID right now, it's a bit mm -hmm. crazy, isn't it? So I'm not, you know, usually I'm training David Loy, which is brilliant. Um, but right now I'm training at home. I've got a set of weights and, 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 and a few bits and bobs at home. And I, I regularly uh, go for walks. I mean, I, I walk, what, about six, seven kilometres every day, go on fasted walks as soon as I get up, out the door and I walk. And I, and I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm 48 this year. And I feel great, um, you know, feel in decent shape for my age. And I enjoy it. You know, I don't kill myself. Yeah. Anymore. It's, it's more of a fun thing rather than trying to yeah. be this person. But, um, and eat well, you know, they, they yeah. say, you, know, you want to be in shape is what you eat. So just over a year ago, I decided to um, become a pescatarian. My partner's a vegan. Um, and I, I find it easy, you know, so it's like mm -hmm. what? months now of me not eating meat whatsoever and mm -hmm. I've that very easy so I enjoy that um I did decided to give up alcohol this year I don't know how easy that's gonna be uh, <laughs> a little bit more difficult maybe <laughs> yeah, not that I drink that but I'm, I'm more of a social drink you know like yeah, I of course. be and whatnot you know with my mates yeah. you, have a, you have a can or two but um so yeah so maybe if we you interview me again you'll say how did the drinking go on I'll be like oh I failed on that one but <laughs> you'll be like just got me pint here <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah oh. I'll make sure it's an evening after the watershed don't worry <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> laughing that somebody run coop Coop's run is just what is just about to Google that, um, Googling that race. I'm like, oh, who's not the one who gets a horse? <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what? I've always, like, I've read all that, but I've never seen the video, so I feel like I need to YouTube the oh, video. Oh, no, you really, you really <laughs> don't. You really don't. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're hosting a dinner party and you can invite four of the runners. Who do you invite and why? Wow, God, that's a big question. Um, well, it would have to be Jesse Owens straight away. That's the first one there, you know. Uh -huh. Most probably one of, if not the greatest athlete of all time in the respect of, you know, what he had to endure at that point. You know, 1936 Olympics, Hitler, the whole regime, black athlete. Oh, my God, you know. And then he comes back home to America and... Yeah to the olympic parties not even allowed in the front door wow. you know he, he's yeah, got to go back, like a, you know because all that segregation back then yeah of course and you think that guy was incredible so number one straight i said that very quickly yeah you did that was right there wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, number, number one um well all the a lot of them are all my mates so i i'd like to, i'm trying to think of people who i i never really met that much uh maybe carl lewis um was an amazing sprinter back in 84. I actually met him at the 1996 Olympic Games very briefly. So I would have liked to have met Carl back then. God, four athletes. It's, it's, it's a real, <laughs> real, real, real hard one, that is. Um, I know. But it's I, only a small table, Jamie. Sorry, you can't have I, everyone there. <laughs> I can't even answer it. I mean, I'd have to invite Colin because he, would, he wouldn't be like, you know. Uh, maybe, yeah, and it'd be pretty mad if you didn't invite him. Sure. Yeah, maybe, I'd, invi I'd invite my partner Cheryl, even though yeah. she's international, she wasn't an international athlete. She managed to get me to run a London marathon in 2011, um, wow. and and she'd never run under four hours. And mm -hmm. I uh, I said to her, "Babe, don't worry about it. I'll get you under four hours." I'd never run a marathon in my life. <laughs> like, the difference oh, from a 400 meters. <laughs> But this is the thing, right? People think that because I'm a runner, they think I can run like a marathon. Any distance, yeah. Like, it's like a Ferrari in a la and, and a 4x4. It's two different vehicles. Right? Um, sure. I ended up running three hours 50. Um, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was really happy with that. And my partner ran yeah. three. So, yeah, it was, it was great. So I would definitely have to invite her to the table as well because I'm yeah. so, so she would like to be sat with Jesse Owens and Colin as well. <laughs> uh, I imagine. And who else would it be? Um, I tell you who I'd invite. The last person I'd invite on that would be my father, right? So he yeah. was never an athlete. Well, 
I was only chatting to uh, somebody only today about this is um, my, me and my father used to run against my dad in the south of France every year on the beach, right? Yeah, so we're oh God. in 11, 12, 13 and all that. And we'd run 60 metres up this beach, right? Like going through up this yeah. beach. Oh, who are these Muppets, right? Anyway, <laughs> I got to 14, maybe 15. I can't remember exactly what age it was. We had a race. And I absolutely annihilated my dad. And that was the first, uh, the last time he ever <laughs> me. So I'd say that my dad was a pretty poor runner, but he was a runner back in the day. <laughs> yeah, he ran. yeah. I'd like to invite my dad as well. So uh, it would be uh, my partner, my dad, uh, uh, and Colin. And uh, oh, yeah, and I, I picked fine now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, no, we're going to have to get a table chair from somewhere, aren't we? Yeah. I thought we've got a chair in the cupboard or something. Yeah, but, <laughs> There's another yeah. one on. <laughs> No, yeah. that sounds like a very good uh, dinner party to us for sure. Okay, yeah. so we've just got some um, quick, quick five questions. questions. But there's quite a few on here. So are you okay if we just answer some of the questions? Yeah, that sure. I'm, I'm going to yeah. scroll all the way up to the top and try and oh, try and not miss everyone. Let's see. I, right, let I me can, go through some of these questions. I can, so, oh, Todd Bennett, great, great athlete. Saying rest in peace, Todd Bennett. I, uh, 400 meter runner, absolutely brilliant athlete. Um, I was the guy who took his British, in fact, he had the world record at the 400 meters indoors years ago. Um, lovely guy, he passed away several years ago now. Got a lo lot of love for Todd and uh, he's not with us anymore. So yeah, very good question. And he was an amazing athlete and more importantly, a lovely human being. So uh, very good guy. Yeah. Well, a lot of people yeah. say the same thing about you all over Google. It's like, it's so nice, it's so kind, and so uh, it must be nice to read those things about yourself. And yeah, sure. it's nice. I mean, you know, it's all about how you've been raised. I mean, you know, I always, uh -huh. say, people, I always say to people, all I did is run faster than the other person on the street, right? So, like, think about it for a second now. Right? Uh -huh. How childish is athletics? Like, <laughs> like, you know, like run round in a circle. It's childish, really, isn't it? So I walk down the street going, oh, look at me, look at me, hang on. The people who are important are school teachers, doctors, scientists, you know, they're important yeah. people. So I always find it fascinating when a sportsman or woman does really well and they suddenly got this ego. I'm like, uh -huh. man, like, you need to relax. Like, you, yeah. like it's the doctor who's saving people's lives who are far more important than people. <laughs> so, so. I love that. That's my I love team. that way of thinking for sure. Yes. Um, so, Summer Spot, what advice would you give to someone who wants to be an elite athlete? Um, just enjoy yourself. You know, it's don't take it. <laughs> you know, that's why when I used to race, I always used to have a laugh and have a smile on my face because, you know, if you don't enjoy what you do, right, you're not, you don't do it as well. You know, yeah. you notice in work when you get certain days, you know, oh, and then you just want the day to be up, and then you look back on the day and go, that was a rubbish day. But you know, when you go into work and you have a smile on your face, and you, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you know, you get, you, you give somebody a pair of shoes, they buy a pair of yeah. shoes, the perfect shoe for that, you, you know, one of your clients or whatever, and they come out of the shop and they're buzzing, and you're buzzing because you've done a great transaction. That's life, you know. So to me, you know, any kid or any parent watching this, so they could. Tell them to enjoy it. You know, we're only yeah. here once, you know. I feel yeah. very privileged that I had a career in athletics for quite a number of years. I can't do it anymore. Um, would I go back? I did it because it bloody hurt. It was hard work. I got, <laughs> I got memories. So, yeah, yeah, enjoy yourself, you know. Don't take life too serious. Yeah. Well, you certainly had a ball doing it, didn't you? You've oh, got so many incredible memories. Yeah. Yeah. right quick fire question round then so we're gonna literally fire them at you you've got five to go and then you've just got to give us your your first thought this could go very wrong or very right we'll see but we do it with everyone don't worry okay. <laughs> right. everyone uh, <laughs> you're like quick put the filter on right so your first one what's your favorite favorite treat meal um treat meal uh curry some form of curry it's got to be a vegan curry no a vegetable yeah. We definitely carry every day of the week. Spicy or mild? Which which end are you? Spicy, spicy. it's got to burn. Yeah. Oh, it can't burn too much. <laughs> well, you don't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be reaching for the water because then you do it. <laughs> you want to just be on the edge of starting to sweat a bit. You're, <laughs> you're talking to the poop, but you don't want it to burn. Yeah, for sure. You don't want to burn your taste buds off, no. no. <laughs> um, Go to karaoke song. 
Um, Robbie Williams Angels. No, that's a classic. <laughs> We're not going to ask you to sing it, don't worry. <laughs> no, I've, I've sang that in a pub hard. And really? I've got the worst voice in the world, man. And I met Robbie Williams a few years ago. I was like, mate, like, I've ruined the song. I've ruined it. <laughs> yeah, get it off the chart. Get it off that. Everything is, is done for. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay, so if you were an animal, what would you be? Um, an animal... <sighs> I suppose a cheetah because they run so fast. I would love to just uh, go into that body and feel that. I, I, I ended up going to Namibia um, many moons ago when I was there training with Frankie Fredericks and Darren Campbell. And when you get to see these animals in their environment, you see them chasing something. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, some sort of leopards. That sort of. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love cats. So the next race that we'll see might be instead of Jamie races against a racehorse, Jamie yeah. races against a big cat, maybe. Oh, you never yeah, know. Possibly, yeah, you could see Anyone's that. Anyone's heard it here first? <laughs> Somebody's just Gemma, Gem, 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 Nine Hundred. I'm loving. No, that's it. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. I love gonna... it. I love it. I love it. Um, so, if a movie was made of your life, who would play you? Oof! I tell you, a movie made of my. Who would it be? Um, I oh God, that's a good one. That's a really good one. One of my favourite movie stars. I love, I love the movies. It's I love Robert Downey Jr. I just think he's a great. I, I love Marvel films. I mean, uh -huh. but I, I I saw that. What's that? Um, oh, it's it's a, it's a number one on Netflix at the moment. Not not um, Edgar, um it's a, it's like the house. Um, oh, it's, that black guy who's the main actor in it. Um. I don't know. Oh. I should know as well. I spend my evenings every single one on yeah, Netflix. It's, it was number one on Netflix and everyone was loving it. And the, the girls were... Oh, Bridgerton! Yes, yes. Yes, I the Duke. Oh, yeah. That, Duke. Like, like that guy. That guy. Yeah. That, that, yeah, he's French, isn't he? That, that um, number two guy, isn't it? To yeah. me. Like, I yeah. Mean, I can see it. Yeah. As soon as he walked on screen, he was like, ah. I thought, yeah, you can it, mate. You can it. <laughs> Yeah, I literally all ages have gone wild for him, haven't they? Yeah, it's, it's, uh... that's like that, you know what I mean? So I think I, he's just cool. Not that I've got that. I'm not. I'm not comparing myself, but if <laughs> I can be on another level, right? Like, he's like, like to me, he's there. But I think, yeah, it would be him because he would make me look cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, last so one. last one is describe your running career in three words. Um, fun, hard, yep. uh, yeah. and bloody hard, and, <laughs> and, and vomit. Nice. <laughs> okay. Good <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be sick at least five times a week. Wow, really? Is that, was that yeah. every day when you were training or? What's that? Was that just when you were training? Yeah, or? Just, no, that yeah. was just. I did nice when I was in the night. Yeah, as I'd say, <laughs> after one too many Jaeger bombs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, so, yeah, it was just purely from the training, like, you know, I mean, it yeah. was, it was, got crazy, 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 crazy hard. Yeah. Massive acid city. <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly, like, I, I, I still remember it now, like, the fit, that horrible, horrible, yeah. horrible. But, you know, that that's what it took to get the medals. You know, I was one of these athletes where, you didn't get that accolade. I didn't get that accolade unless I gave a hundred. I know so we get a hundred percent. Gave a hundred and ten percent. I gave more. I, yeah. I I left. I left the part me on the track. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Yeah, that's a bit. Of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I know we said last. We've answered all the questions now. But what did you have nutrition wise? Then obviously, I suppose because you were running such, you know, four hundred meters. What? What were you nutritional? Yeah, well, look, for me, Colin Jackson, you know, I said he was my coach. So Colin mm -hmm. would, um, he was an amazing cook, you know, and he was really into his nutrition and health and all that. So he basically took the sweets out of my hand, wouldn't allow me to eat sweets, he could, any fizzy drinks. No, you're not allowed. So he basically was very much very a wholesome diet. You know, I'd have, I'd have the eggs for breakfast before training, the poached eggs, you know. I would I'd come home from training and we'd have, let's say, the pastas, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But 
most of the food was cooked by Colin, amazing cook. You know, that's why I think right. he's been a master chef. So yeah, very much into that. Yes, we'd have all the proteins, vitamins and minerals and that um, because you couldn't, you know, you couldn't compete by just having your mum's Sunday lunch, you know, but you'd have... <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, but, Cheese sandwich, perhaps yeah. in a little bag for but, you to I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story on that. My mum's funny, right? Like, um, God rest her soul. She, she's an amazing woman. She, um, I was due to race Michael Johnson, right? The fastest athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Be. So I was due to race Michael Johnson and I was in the stand and um, I had like an hour and 10 minutes before I had to go and race, right? So I said, yeah. I'd better go. I've got to race, um, I I've got to race Michael Johnson. My mum turns to me and goes, Jamie, do you want a Mr. Kipling cake? <laughs> hey, mum, I'm just about <laughs> Michael Johnson. <laughs> I don't really think of Mr. Kipling would cut so well. I'm a hero, man. She's amazing. Just go get it, you know. <laughs> was it a fun and fancy, though? Because, I mean, uh, if it was. Oh, no, uh, yeah, if it was, if I had twisted my arm, no. <laughs> the farmhouse slice, man. Oh, yeah, no, that doesn't do it for me. I can't, man. No. Oh, the farmhouse slice. I love it. In fact, I might go to. <laughs> Late and go up there, like. I know. That's it now. Your uh, your shopping list is is getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been. I know we kept you so longer than we said. Bit over. Hey, no, no problem. I you know I've really enjoyed it, and um, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't answer all the questions and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was good fun, and I you know generally wish you guys thanks for reaching out for me by the way. Yeah. And I wish you and your shop and everything the success. Thank you. Eat and um, you know, it's things like this which are really good fun, which you're doing slightly different to lots of other people in your environment. So good job on you and that. We're trying, no, we're thank trying. You. But thank you. You've been every bit as amazing as you thought you would be. So um, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you take care and stay safe and we'll uh, hopefully see you again soon. Yeah, okay. All right, then. There you go. <laughs> take, take care, guys. Thanks, Jamie. See you Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.